Godzilla vs. Kong, directed by Andrew Wingard, stars Godzilla vs. Kong, going at it for the first time in a very long time to see who is the mightier titan. Now, let me get down to the nitty-gritty of this because I want to make this kind of short because this movie is only a little bit less than two hours and there's really not a lot of meat on the bone for this movie. Uh, the best parts about this movie are Godzilla vs. Kong. That's pretty much it. The, the CGI and the fights and everything involving the two as far as them fighting one another and, you know, combating one another, it's really breathtaking. It is something to behold that just a few years ago, like, the CGI is not on the level that it is now, which is insane to think about, but it's true. The fights are absolutely amazing to look at. They are larger than life. That's what these past few movies of Godzilla... Uh, Kong Skull Island and then Godzilla King of the Monsters they really captured the idea of these monsters being these huge enormous creatures just going at it and destroying the land and I can you know really commend the directors and the creative team for that unfortunately these movies have a really hard time of wrapping everything else around the monsters Kong ends up going along with a bunch of humans on a side quest to go retrieve something and they are trying to figure out a power source for this agency called apex and it's just it's really a bunch of boring stuff like i never really genuinely cared about any of it and then when it's revealed as what apex is actually doing and why they need all these materials it just kind of felt lackluster a little bit and also i don't think it really helps that a lot of these characters i didn't even really care about in the first place that as I mentioned before, these movies have a hard time with making humans like bearable and like having any sort of emotional attachment to them. Oddly enough, the only person that you really care about is the little girl that is able to communicate with Kong through sign language. And that's about it. Everybody else is just kind of pointless, meaningless. And there's just too many of them too. You have people from Apex and then you have people with Kong and then you have you know the entirety of everybody else on the earth to worry about as well that have to be in the wasteland that is the battlefield between Kong and Godzilla and what's amazing too is as I mentioned it's just a little under two hours it drags a little bit with these human characters every time a fight scene ends we jump to characters that we just don't care about and it really drags this movie like the pacing just kind of halts like you don't care about them so like the minute that they show up you're like why are we here i want to go back to what kong and godzilla are doing and that's the other thing too about this movie is you don't get a lot of godzilla as you do kong it's kind of amazing to think about like godzilla is like the first name on the title of the movie but he's the least amount of time you spend with in the movie that's it's kind of interesting to me and it may seem like I hate this movie a lot. I don't. I, I Like I said, I genuinely enjoyed the fight scenes, and that is the best thing about this movie. And if you're somebody that doesn't really care about character development, and you just want to watch dumb fights of these monstrous creatures, then, I mean, you're going to have a blast. But, like, if you want a little bit more out of these movies than just, oh, I'm going to punch you, and then, oh, wait, I'm going to punch you, and then fire, and then, you know throw things at you like you know if you want a little bit more than that with your humans then you might find it disappointing and i'm sorry to say that but i mean until they understand how to create compelling characters and not put as many in there the, that human aspect of these movies is always going to be lackluster in my opinion and not to mention with the human characters as well there's so much dumb plot holes and kind of like odd situations that they're put in like especially involving Millie Bobby Brown and her friend and the conspiracy theorist guy that she goes on a quest with kind of like that part of the story does not matter for the majority of the time and then once you finally realize what the importance is of the story you're like oh that's it like it's just we got here through that and it was just so boring and like just like the way that they went about it and like other surrounding characters with those three and like who should be worried about what 
and like it's just all like flat like i was just questioning the motives the entire time i was just didn't fully understand why they went this route and why somebody didn't read that and go but what about this it just felt like somebody just like spit this all on a piece of paper and just went hey well you know they got a lot of monsters fighting and we have the budget for that so might as well just toss it out there and really that's the biggest thing about this movie that you're going to get is that theatrical experience that you want with these monsters fighting i watched it at home i kind of wish i watched it in theaters but i'm also kind of glad i didn't watch it in theaters because it's like it would have been a waste of time at that point but if you're just there just to see monsters fight on the big screen with some booming sound effects you're going to get that i think i'm going to get godzilla two and a half stars i kind of rustled with making that a little bit higher but when the only aspect of your movie that I really genuinely like is how good the CGI looks and the fights and nothing else, it just, like, you don't deserve the higher praise that some people are giving this movie. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoy the review, and I'll talk to you guys next time.